we've all experienced them at one time or another power outage power failure is hugely inconvenient and can be catastrophic the longer they go on for the bigger the fallout and the higher the collateral damage but power outages don't just happen to the national grid your body's power grid is also subject to failure because your body's power stations are not designed to run 24 7. in this episode of better body chemistry tv we explore how the body's power grid becomes faulty better body chemistry tv is brought to you by dr sandy a scientist turned gremlin buster helping you battle sugar gremlins heifer lumps and other health horribles through better body chemistry remember small things can make a big difference to your health the body's power grid depends on billions of mitochondria tiny energy furnaces locked inside virtually every cell in the body the furnaces can be fueled by carbs or fats but to get the fuel burning the furnace needs to be a light since keeping a furnace fully powered continuously is a costly exercise the system should only fire up when energy demands require it energy demands fluctuate throughout the day but as a rule energy demand spikes when you stop eating which should happen when you're sleeping so what does it take to get the party started well, quite a few enzymes need to come to the party to get the mitochondrial furnace fired up. But the nicotinamide phosphoribosyl transferase, or NAMT, is the enzyme who makes the call. This little guy gets things going. He does so by churning out nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide, NAD for short. Aren't you glad scientists love abbreviations? Try saying nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide quickly. Hush. The NAD is like a key. It turns on lots of things. Among them, deacetylase CERT1, which floods the mitochondria with sertraline. And lift off! The furnace is firing on all cylinders. But what triggers NAMT to start the process? Researchers from the Northwestern University Feinberg School of Medicine were curious. So they set about exploring what prompted NAMT to power up. Since the furnace only needs to light up when fuel supplies are low, and fuel supplies are low when you're not eating and you don't eat when you're sleeping, the team suspected clock genes must be involved in the furnace lighting ceremony. So they created a situation which would require the furnaces to light up in mice. They stopped the little guys eating. They did the experiment in two different groups of mice. Group 1 were normal mice. Group 2 were mice with a broken body clock. These mice had been genetically modified in such a way they were missing the main clock gene. As expected, in normal mice, the mitochondrial furnaces fired up when the energy demand spiked. So the cells in the mice never went hungry. But in the mice whose body clock was defective, despite the shortage of energy, the furnaces never fired. NAMT never bothered to kickstart the process. So in these mice, the cells went hungry. And a hungry cell is going to be unhappy and vulnerable. But NAMT is not the only way 
to start a fire. The research team discovered they could fire up the furnace without the help of NAMT. Remember, NAMT set things in motion by churning out NAD. The team discovered simply adding NAD is able to get the furnaces firing. So what? Well, NAD is vitamin B3 in disguise, better known as niacin. Getting enough vitamin B3 is a requirement. Diets deficient in niacin cause a condition known as pellagra, which means rough skin in Italian. The condition is serious. It is characterized by more than just skin troubles. It can cause dementia and death. But it's pretty hard to be short of vitamin B3. In the modern world, you're far more likely to have too much. And it's been speculated that too much could be contributing to problems like insulin resistance, obesity, and diabetes. This research explains why the mitochondrial furnaces are never turned off. They churn out energy and in the process create lots and lots of reactive oxygen species. And it's those reactive oxygen species that get up to all sorts of mischief because they're causing oxidative stress. Mitochondria need down time too. So work on coordinating your diary with your body clock and supplement wisely. You probably don't need extra vitamin B3. Too much can create bad body chemistry. <laughs> Looking for ways to create better body chemistry to optimize your health? Visit our website and sign up to get the inside scoop on better body chemistry. The advice is simple to follow and based on real science, not hype. Got friends and family that are insulin resistant? Spread the word by sharing this video and subscribe to our channel so you can discover how to minimize that oxidative stress. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Remember, small things can make a big difference to your health.